Hey, straight into this one. To understand where the B21 is coming from, we'll take a look at the current model, the B2 Spirit. It looks like just a smaller version. The birth of the B2 stealth bomber was a key moment in the Cold War. This decades-long conflict between the US and the Soviet Union was a fight for dominance in almost every aspect of global power. It was a non-stop race to see who could outperform in military supremacy and nuclear domination. And that race reached its peak with the B-2 Spirit, a bomber designed to carry nuclear weapons and keep enemies afraid of attacking. I got a few requests to look at the B-21 and I don't know anything about it, aside from the fact that it's going to one day replace the B-2s, if I have that correct. So, going into this one pretty blind. But this may be the first non-Cold War era aircraft I cover on the channel. Instead of sending out the slow-moving flying castles of the past, this ghost ship could deliver a nuclear payload to the Kremlin without ever being seen. It proved that the US was ahead of the Soviet Union and created constant fear that one of these bombers might fly overhead at any moment. If you can see it. But the price of maintaining the B-2 has kept that possibility quite low. In 2022, its cost per flight hour was over $150,000. Yeah, you heard that right, that's per hour. Hence, it's no surprise its flight plan has been kept low. $150,000 per hour. And in the B2 video we watched, they were saying it costs billions to make. $2.1 billion per aircraft, which is probably why they only built 21. Although there were apparently two crashes, so there are only 19 of them left. It's estimated that the B2 requires 51 hours of maintenance for every hour in the air, meaning each flight has months of service afterward. Wow. And you can barely turn a screw on this plane, let alone work on any of its complex systems, unless you're in a temperature-controlled hangar. That's not to say this plane doesn't have a purpose. As you probably heard, the US recently launched an airstrike against Iran using the B2, and news around the world reported on it. And even more recently, President Trump welcomed Vladimir Putin in Alaska with a B2 flyover, a show of power before their peace talk started. That's an expensive way to say hello. Also, where in Alaska did they meet? Now, Northrop Grumman is developing a stealth bomber to respond to these dangers, using the military's most powerful data-sharing network. So here is the B-21 radar, the future of stealth and the new backbone of the fleet. Looking at it, you might think they just shrunk the B2. And it looks slightly sleeker with that dark gray color compared to the light. Also slightly less geometric on the backside. But because it's smaller, I wonder what the payload difference is. And well, you're not entirely wrong. The designers kept what worked and improved on the model, rather than just starting from scratch. The name is partly an homage to the Doolittle Raiders, a group of pilots who carried out a surprise attack against the Japanese after Pearl Harbor. Know that story. Doolittle's raid, aka the Tokyo raid, was the first American air operation to strike the Japanese archipelago. The raid caused comparatively minor damage but served as an initial retaliation for the attack on Pearl Harbor a year prior. 16 B-25 Mitchell medium bombers, each with a crew of five, were launched from the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier USS Hornet in the Pacific Ocean. James Doolittle was the one who planned the attack and it was one of six American carrier raids against Japan and Japanese-held territories conducted in the first half of 1942. Wow. And now let's get back to the B-21 and its design. Remember, Northrop isn't just upgrading a plane, they're maintaining a legacy. They're building on past successes to create a warfighter that will last for decades and cost much less to make. The iconic wing spans 40 meters, shaving off 12 meters from the original bomber. The plane is even more compact, with estimates coming in at 16 meters. Underneath the plane we can see the hidden bomber bay, tucked within the wing which keeps the body tight and aerodynamic. The real question is, how do you get this behemoth past radar, even at the smaller size? Look, there are some specs the military won't share with anyone right now, not even the US Congress. But reports have shared a mysterious sponge-like coating around the bomber's body, made to absorb radar waves and lower acoustic signatures. 
The radar cross-section, which measures how detectable an object is on radar, is one of the most critical aspects of the design. It's crazy to look at the B2 compared to the F-16. The F-16 is smaller by every metric, yet more detectable somehow. What is technology? Because one little edge, one little bump and the whole staff thing is blown. Keeping that in their minds, the engineers blended the cockpit windows into the frame. Joints, seams and tiny crevices that could compromise the plane's radar cross-section have all been removed from sight. The computational electronics on board will also cut down the radar signatures given out with every ping. And in some cases, the sensor will trick radar systems into seeing something that isn't even there. Instead of spotting a full-size bomber, the radar might detect an object the size of a tennis ball, which could slip by entirely unnoticed. In other words, this plane would be long gone by the time you suspect something. And that's assuming you were paying attention. Slightly These terrifying. engines can reach speeds of up to Mach 0.8, which may not compare to other warplanes, but that does mean it goes farther while using less fuel. Mach 0.8 is about 613.8 miles per hour. And for reference, the B-52 is a maximum speed of Mach 9.5. But more importantly, they're designed to minimize thermal and radar signatures. As you can see, the B-21's engines are recessed into the wings, hidden in folds that look like fish lungs, keeping them out of plain sight. Check out the narrow 2D exhaust in the back, which is much improved over the boxy sugar scoop design of the B-2. When we look at the entire plane, it reveals that every curve is continuous and every angle mirrors itself, making radar detection even more difficult. When radar waves hit a flat surface, they can easily bounce back to the source. But against curves, the waves scatter, making it difficult to track this plane. So the contours on this plane reduce the risk of detection. But how does it handle once you get it up in the air? Now this looks like a flying manta ray. Remember, the entire plane is just one giant wing. So to make sure it can withstand extreme forces, teams run stress tests with hydraulic equipment, bending the wing to see how much pressure it can withstand. The problem is, as we discussed with the B2, controlling a plane with only one wing makes for a bumpy ride. To keep it under control, the B21 uses what's known as a fly-by wire system. Instead of an old-school mechanical system controlling the flight, a fly-by-wire system relies on dozens of sensors embedded in the wings, collecting data about the conditions of the flight. The data is fed into onboard systems, and then the flaperons on the plane are adjusted in real time, making for a smoother ride. But the most revolutionary change to the Stealth Bomber is the highly customizable software running its systems. Need to share location data with a nearby satellite? Press a button. Want to run a new surveillance program? Press the link to download it because the B-21 can be updated at will. Well, that's the goal, anyway. This kind of plug-and-play system is called an Open Architecture Software Program. And it'll keep this bird flying for the next few decades. It's crazy how technology is moving so fast that they had to create a whole system to keep up with it or it would just be obsolete in a few years. When we were looking at the B-2, I thought that design still looks so futuristic to me. I believe it was created in the last 10 years. And this is the upgraded version, so who knows how long this is going to be used for. Engineers can update it as they go, without having to constantly replace the hardware. Think of it as having different character builds in a video game. Systems for specific missions, like scouting, could be developed, integrated and deployed at a moment's notice. Then replaced with something that's maybe more combat focused on a different day for a different mission. It's seamless, fast and affordable. The design is part of what engineers call a family of systems, a feature that will eventually be integrated into the military's new data sharing network, the Joint All-Domain Command Control. This project will connect every data sensor in the US military, so they can instantly share information with each other, almost like all the parts of one brain working together. We'll cover more of those capabilities in the B-21 in a moment, but the automation and data sharing could eventually lead to an unmanned stealth bomber. Look, we can only go off the bits and pieces the military shares, but to be fair, this is probably the most they've shared in a while. And what they've shown about how they built this plane is pretty remarkable. Welcome to Plan 42, Northrop's secretish facility in Palmdale, California. Desert. 
While they've invited the media to show off the world's deadliest weapons here many times, much of the production process still remains a trade secret. But here are some of the techniques they've been willing to share. As the parts arrive, a team of workers assembles the plane bit by bit, from the outside in, which is backwards from how planes are typically built. Normally, planes are built from the inside out, starting with the frame and adding the outer skin last. Doing it the opposite way might sound impractical. But remember that radar can detect bumps and imperfections on the plane's surface, which will give away its position. So with the B-21, the smooth outer surface comes first. The internal parts are then installed through access points and sealed up again, keeping the bomber's surface perfectly smooth and harder for radar to detect. On the old B-2, workers had to remove the coating around the exterior by hand before accessing the wiring under any of the 100 plus panels around the plane. Now, engineers have designed simple doors that they can just easily pop open. But how many people does it take to build one bomber? After winning the contract, Northrop constructed three new buildings to manufacture the planes and assembled a team of more than 8,000 people to crank out a massive order of 100 B-21 stealth bombers. Right now, the rumor is that they're on track to deliver 7 to 8 planes a year. It's an ambitious plan that's been made possible thanks to the huge developments made in augmented reality. Engineers use digital threads of the B-21 and try out newly developed systems and parts in real time before they ever go into production line. The data uploaded to this digital twin of the plane can also be shared with Northrop partners as they work to develop other systems. Working in this digital space significantly reduces errors in real life. Therefore, engineers can safely test wild new ideas before investing millions of dollars into systems that may never be developed. And that's important, because right out of the gate, the Air Force demanded to keep costs down this time, even though it has rarely received a fleet order on time or on budget. The last fleet of B-2 bombers was supposed to number 132 and cost $500 million apiece. But instead, it received 21 planes costing $2 billion each. This time, the Air Force ordered 100 radars and committed to spending over $200 billion over the next 30 years to develop this fleet. And each plane will cost about $700 million. Although again, because of classified line items known as black budget, the actual cost of this program is probably much, much higher. Do you think the $700 million is the price just for the plane to be built? as far as the components, or that also counts the 8,000 employees that they had to salary. I had to go back for a second to make sure I heard the numbers straight. So he said the B2 was supposed to come in at $500 million each, but ended up being $2 billion each, which is four times more than their initial projections. So $700 million per B21 may just be the hopeful number. Still, maintenance costs are about to come way down. This time, work on the bomber can be done outdoors, like every other plane, in a normal hangar over a few hours instead of months. And unlike the B-2, the Air Force actually plans to use this plane more than a few times a year. For that, its capabilities have to match the best of the best. So let's take a closer look. The radars can carry long-range nuclear weapons, meaning they don't have to be anywhere near their target to cause mass devastation. Considering they can travel over 11,000 kilometers without refuel, there's almost nowhere you can hide. And remember, the bomber is meant to act as just one part of a family of systems. Future missions envision the B-21 flying alongside other aircraft, like drones, which could guide and share data and act as decoys to distract enemy radar. It could act like an airborne general, giving out orders on the spot to the drones, tanks and even nearby battleships. Or, with the help of other ground and satellite systems, the B-21 could strike multiple targets on the ground from a secure location, keeping operators safe and minimizing human loss. There is a wild theory that pilots might wear helmets equipped with augmented reality, which would give them a complete view of their surroundings. The future is crazy. Actually, we're living in the future. The beauty of the design isn't being the newest. It's being able to keep adapting to what's new. No matter what advancements are made between now and the next 30 years, this plane will always be able to plug and play. So far, three B-21 radar stealth bombers have reportedly been built, and the US Congress is pushing to have the aircraft ready for testing by 2026. 
So what do you think? Will the B21 really become the future of air power? And would you like to see more videos like this one? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to get your data removed from the internet, make sure to try delete me with our link in the description for 20% off. And how much will they really cost is my question. I'm just curious now. This was another one from Mega Builds. I'm going to link them in the description so you could watch the video without me. And they have a lot of other videos like this if you're interested. I'll link you the one I saw on the B2. We've come a long way from how these things were built during the Cold War. And then the change in technology alone, from the open software to the possible use of augmented reality. But what I want to know is how many people are flying in a B2 at any given time? And how many people will be flying in a B21? They both have two. A B-2 typically has a pilot and a mission commander. And then a B-21 will have a pilot and a weapons officer. How soon do you think until unmanned missions will start to be the norm? Anyway, leave your thoughts on this one. I need a Cold War book. So if you know of a Cold War book, please tell me. I'll stop and think of some music. I was really sitting here trying to think of songs or artists that reference aircrafts, but Aside from Led Zeppelin and the B-52s, both of which have already been mentioned, I was hitting a wall. So if you can think of one, feel free to add it. For everybody else, today's category is just going to be music from the States. Easy, broad, any genre, any language. I've been listening to a lot of 60s music after uploading that 60s video. So my first choice is Jimi Hendrix. He gets me in a mood. The lyrics typically have something to do with that. Manic Depression is one of my favorites. This is off the Are You Experienced album, which is psychedelic, but I'd call this track jazz rock. And I just now found out he was from Seattle. All this time I thought he was from New York, but the next band is from New York, Menahan Street Band from Brooklyn. They blend genres, mostly jazz, funky, soul. It's instrumental. I would compare them to the Els Michael Affair, but I like Menahan Street Band better. And lastly, Gardens and Villa and their song Orange Blossom. This is an indie rock group out of Santa Barbara. And whenever I show somebody this song, it's hit or miss on whether they like it or not. So all the songs are going to be linked in the description. Let me know if you like this one. And that's it from me. Leave your thoughts, drop your music. Thank you for watching with me. I'll see you next time.